Coming up on Movie Buff this week, Miley Cyrus makes it onto the big screen in Hannah Montana, the movie. Hugh Jackman gets his claws out in Wolverine. And we talk to the cast of Is Anybody There? about Sir Michael Caine's magical performance. Hello, New York! Is there nothing that this teenager can't do? At just 16, Miley Cyrus is a successful recording artist and TV actress, and now she's a film star too. Her popular Disney TV show, Hannah Montana, has been given the big screen treatment. Miley stars again as Miley Stewart, the girl whose alter ego is rock star Hannah Montana. In Hannah Montana the movie, basically, um, it's kind of like, Anna slash Miley, both of them kind of need to take it back down to the real world and get out on a horse and have to go out and actually work and get dirty sometimes and just like bring yourself back to reality. And I think that's awesome because I know I have to do that in my life sometimes. Like it feels great to just come home to Nashville and be like, okay, this is who I am. More than just being stuck, you know, in the middle of the big city and just never taking a minute to you know, really realize who you are and where you've come from, because I think where you're where you're from reflects a lot of who you are and who you'll become as you get older. Dad, come on, don't do this. I think we might be done. You're saying I can never be Hannah again? Ask me in two weeks. That's right, that is Miley's dad, Billy Ray, starring alongside her as her on-screen father, the man that decides that enough's enough and it's time that his pop star daughter gets a dose of reality. It's super important to stay, you know, like true to yourself and uh, also your family and um, always like stay in touch with who you are and kind of bring yourself back when you see yourself falling away through, you know, from your heart and listen to your heart. Yes, as expected, there is a strong moral message, but there's lots of fun too. And Tyra Banks makes an appearance. One, jump for it. And there's singing, lots of it. All the songs in the movie are songs that I just like feel that suit the movie because we wouldn't put a song in here that we didn't feel really went with the scene or really helped carry the um, you know the show and I think like that some of the songs are more powerful than our words are more powerful than what we end up saying more powerful than the scenes and I think that's so cool a movie can be lifted up by music. Well, if you get lifted up by Super Smiley Miley, then this won't disappoint. Hannah Montana, the movie, has already topped the box office in the States, and I reckon it will in the UK too. We've seen him abseiling, shooting down a zip line, and parading around on a bike. It's been hard to ignore the promotion for Hugh Jackman's latest film, but was it all worth it? X-Men Origins Wolverine, as the name suggests, takes us back to the sideburn-loving hero's early years. As well as reprising his role, Hugh also worked as a producer and picked out some of his co-stars, admitting he was more enthusiastic on this the fourth instalment than he'd been on any of the others. Every cast member we have, I'm happy to say, is someone that I've been passionate about. So I, I arrive on set, I'm like, yeah, it's you, hey, how you doing? I'm so thrilled you're here, you know. It's a very different feeling, and I think because of that, playing the role as well, um, the moments between action and cut have probably been more enjoyable on, on this than any of the other X-Men films. And the others certainly didn't have this man, Liv Schreiber, a.k.a. Sabretooth is also Wolverine's half-brother. You don't call, you don't write. How else am I supposed to get your attention? Notice the lack of metal in those knuckles. The story takes us back to a time before his skeleton was bonded with indestructible adamantium and fills in some of the missing pieces of the puzzle. One thing we found out in X-Men 2 was that he volunteered to be experimental. He volunteered for this, and in this movie you're going to find out why. It's a shame Halle Berry and some of the others from the old gang didn't make it. The story is a bit on the silly side, even for a comic book film. It's sort of a little bit like uh, 
one of those great 70s action movies, you know, little Dirty Harry, think Dirty Harry, think Mad Max. This character has this myopic vision just to absolutely wreak havoc and revenge on anyone and everybody who's done bad things to him. If you say so, it's sibling rivalry with a couple of deaths and a few wars thrown in for good measure. You can see where the money's been spent though, 10 out of 10 for effects. So it's certainly a treat for the eyes, especially the scenes with a naked Mr. Jackman. I don't do card tricks. Or maybe one or two. It's being described as one of the best performances of his career. And at 76, Sir Michael Caine's had one hell of a career. In Is Anybody There, the legendary actor plays Clarence, an elderly magician in the early stage of dementia. His portrayal so convincing, his wife refused to watch him work. Co-star Anne-Marie Duff says it was an honour to appear with him. It was astonishing. He's an incredible talent and an incredible man. He's such a gentleman. And He's just generous with himself, you know, and he's committed to what he's doing. He's always working really hard. It's a lesson for everybody, you know, that it never ends. You keep going, you keep trying, and that's what I, I loved about sharing the set with him, you know. Set in 80s seaside England, it's the tale of a 10-year-old boy named Edward, played by upcoming young actor Bill Milner, who lives at an old people's home run by his parents, David Morrissey and Anne-Marie. While his mum struggles to keep the family business afloat, his dad copes with the onset of a midlife crisis, complete with dodgy haircuts. Yeah, do you not like my haircut? I like my haircut. It was not for you. Yeah, I didn't take that one home. I did take some of the extension things home, which didn't go down well, but my hair's always all over the place. But I thought it was also, you know, it's a man who's having a midlife crisis, so, you know, I think he felt that that was the hip look at the time, so he, he just got it wrong slightly. Edward is a lonely child who, as all those around him die, becomes obsessed with ghosts and finding evidence of the afterlife. He's helped with his quest by Clarence, and so their friendship and journey begins with a magical and believable on-screen chemistry. Sir Michael is full of praise for the young Milner. He is so responsible and so natural. He's a natural movie actor. Uh, uh, has no theatrical training, which is wonderful because he doesn't have to get rid of all those tricks, you know. Uh, and and he's, it's like acting with another adult actor. You you don't feel you've got to watch out in case he makes a mistake. You just completely rely on him to carry his half of the scene, which he does perfectly. You'll see in the movie. You don't come back, son. Once they've gone, you can't talk to them. Kane's moving performance truly is outstanding amongst a stellar cast, which also includes Carry On star Leslie Phillips and Sylvia Sims. And as Sir Michael's hinted at quitting the movie biz, it could be one of your last chances to catch him on screen.